Blessings. Before this wonderful message from my father in the Lord, late Archbishop Bensi Idaosa, I'd like to share information about anointedtube.com with you, the number one Christian video sharing website today. Anointedtube.com. This is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Preachers, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers' pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Yeah. 
Pastor Professor Benson in the house. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, forevermore. Shout hallelujah. last what number am I say none you can't be number two the reason many of us fail in our life's endeavor is that we put we say God you are in charge then we come around and say don't do all just try some then let me do the rest and everything we try to help God do fail so learn on time that life is not God, you do some, I do some. No. That's why you can sing, have your own way in my life. But Lord, do it for me. The first thing to know in your life as becoming the child of God is that you possess a new spirit that handles problem than you. God didn't come down with matches, with sword, with spirit and say, who made, who, who turned the world void? Why is it become chaotic? Why is it void? Who did it? Who's? He said, no. Spirit, go and find out. Spirit, go and find out. Spirit, go there. If he is the beginning, he created heaven and earth in the beginning. Heaven and earth was in him in the beginning. He brought it out. There's a dream in you. There's life in you. There's miracle in you. There's anointing in you. There's healing in you. There's finances in you. There's surplus in you. There's signs and wonders inside you. No matter how big these things in you are until you speak them forth you never see them come forth how can we avoid voidness in our life how can we eliminate void when we send the spirit to every situation the devil tried to destroy. The spirit gets there with hammer. The spirit gets there with power. The spirit gets there with the sword of the spirit. The spirit is already inside you. But the spirit cannot do anything until you say to the spirit, let there be. Say, let there be. Let there be. Let there be. For a few years now, I've been training myself in two areas of life. Number one, when the power of God is present, don't let the devil be in charge. Did you hear me? Second, I'm training myself to learn that if I'm to practice faith, I should stop fake. I do not believe I can say to God, help me do these things. And I say, but let me do my best first. If I fail, then you help me. But if not, let me do it. The reason many Christians are in trouble every time is that they don't know the difference between faith and fake. They try to say, well, I believe God will do it, but I know I can do it better than God. I have tried severely to see if I can improve on what God is not able to do. I've only succeeded once. 
All the time I tried to do it better than God, I've succeeded once, and that once was when I failed. <laughs> you didn't hear what I said. I've tried every time to help God do it better. And only once I succeeded, and that once I failed. So I've now learned to say no. I should give God first and second chance before I come in to help him. And I found that, <laughs> are you with me today? <laughs> I found that every time I give God opportunity to do something for me, it's never done twice. Did you hear me? It's never done twice. And I also found, Dr. Haverson, you can't improve on God. That's right. That's right. Say it, I can't, on God. I can't improve on God. I can't do it better than God. So what does that mean? I'm learning now to say, rather than me, try to tell God how to do it, when to do it. I should just come to him with humble heart and say, God, help me. Help me. Put your hand on this, my life need. Help me. Let me give you chance to see how far you can go. Then if you are not able, then I can join you to do it. And every time I let him do it like that, when I come back, he's finished it. I have not succeeded yet to give God a backup. I try. <laughs> I try. When I used to be in charge, so many failures. But since I learned to say, God, okay, you be number one and number two. And when you fail, send for me. You, you understand what I'm talking about. You must have got the revelation of what I'm trying to say. Every time I say, God, do it first. And when you fail, send for me. When I come back, I have nothing to do. And that's painful. Very painful. Because I like to see that God is helped. But he doesn't give me opportunity to help him. And I'm sorry for myself. Why can't he wait when he fails, then I help him? <laughs> Say, God, God, from now, now I, put I put you first and last. And last. Now, where will you fit in? <laughs> Do they understand English? <laughs> Say, God, from now, From now I, put I put you first and last. And last. This girl must understand English. <laughs> and now, if God is first and last, what number are you? One, I guess. I don't know. When there was schooling, this woman wasn't born yet, so... <laughs> Now, if God is first and last, what you are an intelligent man, so <laughs> let's find out. Let, let, let's see. He's very intelligent. Look at him, you can just see by the dress, you can tell it. He, he's failed already, no need to ask him. <laughs> if he's first and he's last, what number am I? Say none. none. You can't be number two. The reason many of us fail in our life's endeavor is that we put, we say, God, you are in charge. Then we come around and say, don't do all. <laughs> Just try some, then let me do the rest. And everything we try to help God do, fail. So learn on time that life is not God, you do some, I do some. No. That's why you can sing, have your own way in my life. But Lord, 
do it for me. If you live in Africa, you are going to say, God, do it for me. Because blessed assurance is better than blessed insurance. (laughs) Are you ready now? Genesis chapter 1. The first book of the Bible, if you don't know where it is, start from the book of Revelation. You'll find it. Two days ago, I I saw somebody open Genesis chapter 1 and he went straight to Corinthians. So I said, you'll soon be there. (laughs) Verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and God said let there be light and there was light and God saw the light that it was good and God divided the light from darkness and God called the light day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning were the first day now say with me in the beginning beginning. God created created. in the beginning beginning. now listen beginning God had beginning of creating in our own God, the creator and not created. You believe that? That's right. Okay. He's the creator and not created. He he created all things and all things were created by him and he was not created. Yes or no? I know you went to school. Yes or no? Yes. God is the creator. Say that. God is the creator. After he, God, was established, after he became God and is God and is still God and he shall ever be God, he, in the beginning, that is the unsearchable riches of his power. You try and try and try for 6,000 years. Man is making effort to see when he can find out the secret of God. They went to the moon, they brought sand. (laughs) NASA has spent billions to bring something from there. But the greater they brought is rock. Nothing. They couldn't bring God here. They tried to bring him here, but they can't. And every time they try, they fail. But now, God has beginning of creating. Now, what I'm here to say today is, now that you are already in faith, you have an origin. It is time for you to use your faith in creativity. Are you listening to what I'm saying? You already a Christian. How creative when have you had a foundation of beginning new process of life of creating things there are over 200 million ideas in this single head we are not bringing forth we are not giving birth to what is inside us that's why every time the saints are struggling instead of living. God 
in the beginning created heaven and earth. When he finished creating heaven and earth, the devil spread his hands over what God made. Now listen. You say, I don't know why I have so many troubles. I don't know why I'm so uh, pushed by the world. Somebody once said to me, why is it that the whole world is crumbling around me? I said, where is it? <laughs> he, he said, it's just crumbling around me. I said, show me the crumble. He tried and uh, uh, he said, my market is bad, my home is bad, my marriage is bad, everything I do, there are troubles here and there. I don't know what I have done. I said, you are improving. The devil doesn't trouble dead people. Did you hear what I'm saying? I said, did you hear what I'm saying? The devil doesn't trouble dead people. Once you are pushed here and there, there's life in you. Let me slow down. Let me slow down. The only reason you have trouble in life is because you are a living being as soon as you die your trouble will die so if you want if you don't want any trouble at all die <laughs> god finished creation God created everything, life and lively. But soon you hear the creation was without form and void. How can God create dead things? He doesn't. But why was it void? Somebody killed it. Listen to how God reacted. Listen to how God handled it. The Bible said, and the Spirit of God moved. Said the Spirit moved. Spirit moved. The first thing to know in your life as becoming the child of God is that you possess a new spirit that handles problems than you. God didn't come down with matchet, with sword, with spirit, and say, who made, who, who turned the world void? Why is it become chaotic? Why is it void? Who did it? Who's? He said, no. Spirit, go and find out. Spirit, go and find out. Spirit, go there. When the spirit came, it began to move. Say, move. move. The spirit said, what went wrong? What, 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 what happened? What killed this plant? Who took this flag away? What's wrong? What's wrong? And when the spirit began to move, then God said, I have been told in many theological places around the world, in 102 countries, I have heard preachers say, God created the heaven and earth from nothing. That's a lie of the devil. Heaven and earth did not come from nothing. Heaven and earth came from God. Are you hearing me? If in the beginning was God, and God created heaven and earth, heaven and earth was in God. Say amen if you believe it or not. I don't want you to, to use American sense to try it. If he is the beginning, and he created heaven and earth in the beginning, heaven and earth was in him in the beginning. He brought it out. There's a dream in you. There's life in you. There's miracle in you. There's anointing in you. There's healing in you. There's finances in you. There's surplus in you. There's signs and wonders inside you. No matter how big these things in you are, until you speak them forth, you never see them come forth. Did you hear what I'm saying? Life!
Night was in God. Day was in God. Night was in God. Firmament was in God. Moon and star was in God. Everything was in God. When God now said, let there be. The Bible said, and it was so. Say it was so. Say it was so. Say it was so. There's so many things inside you, you have not allowed to be so. Did you hear what I'm saying? There are millionaires here sitting down now, but they are living in penury. They are living in struggle. They are living without because they have not said, Millions, come forth. Did you hear what I'm saying? God said, Listen, listen to me. God said, how can God say comfort if it wasn't there? Listen to me. This will be clear to you. R- Rhonda, come here. How many of you know this girl? Give her a hand. All right. Nearly 30 years ago. <laughs> did, did you hear me? I learned that in America years ago. Don't tell their age. You've been in trouble. All right. Nearly 30 years ago, a young man and a young woman met. When they met, one day they stood before a pastor and he asked, Will thou have this woman as a lovely wedded wife? He said, I will. Would thou have this man as a lovely wedded husband? He said, I will. After they said, I will. This man took this girl home. (laughs) Are you hearing what I'm saying? (laughs) Did you hear what I'm saying? He took her home. When all that came for the marriage left, he took her in. First took her home, now took her in. few months what has been there before creation what has been there before they met (laughs) nine months after she started bending one day Number one, Rhonda. Number two, Christy. Christy, come here. Come here, Christy. Please give them a hand. Now, one, two. Before she had them for him, they were always here. How did they become? Rhonda and Christy, when this man, as the word, met this girl as the spirit, when they met together as husband and wife, this one came first, and God said, there's still one more, or another. And then this one came next. See, there are so many things inside us, because we refuse to let the spirit and the word merge. If when this man and this girl met, after the wedding in the church, the woman went to West Coast and he went to East Coast as husband and wife. And for 30, nearly 30 years, they've been living apart. There should have been no Christy and no Rhonda. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, 
prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the homepage and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Are you hearing me? Even though they were always there, this you have been there before they met. Do you believe that? They were, they were always there. Why couldn't they come out before they met? <laughs> because they never met. Is that a simple English? Why were they not born before they married? Because they were not married. How did they get born after they were married? Because there was a connection between the connector and the collected. <laughs> Can you say amen? Yeah. When you take the power in the word and merge it with the spirit, answer come forth. No matter how spiritual you are, if you didn't say to what you conceive, come out, it will die inside you. Yeah. The power of birth, the power of creation, only materializes when the spirit and the word become comfort. It wasn't hard for these two queens, these two women, to come out of this girl. Are you hearing my description? This queen and this queen were always there. The effort that this man and woman made was very simple. The connecting wire connected, and she gave birth. There are so many things inside you. You have never bothered to say, come forth. Joy, comfort. Miracle, comfort. You say, I don't know why I'm so sad. You are sad because you didn't let joy come out. I don't know why I'm so poor. You are poor because the wealth in you, you didn't say to prosperity, come forth. When the devil turned the world to a chaotic place, the spirit moved. But when the spirit moved, the devil never left. But when God said, who is with me? <laughs> said the spirit moved. But the world didn't change. I don't think this is an American message. <laughs> Say the spirit move. Then God said. 
Everything you will ever need on earth is already created by God. But now, say now, now. it is time, say it's time, time. To, call to, be. to call to be those things that be not those things that be as not. if they were, if they were. And, they shall be so. and they shall be so. Give these queens a big hand. Avoid voidness in our life. How can we eliminate void when we send the Spirit to every situation the devil tried to destroy? The Spirit gets there with hammer. The Spirit gets there with power. The Spirit gets there with the sword of the Spirit. The spirit is already inside you. But the spirit cannot do anything until you say to the spirit, let there be. Say, let there be. Let there be. Let there be. Let there be. How many of you are looking for finances? More than what you can spend. How many? I say, how many need more money than what they are making now? How many need more money than what they are making? Hold your hand up. Say, ah. ah. Keep it up. The only way you can have more money than what you are making is when you begin to call to be. The things that be not as if they were. Learn how to live relaxed life. Zachariah said, it's not by might. Put your hands down. It's not by power. It is by my spirit. How does the spirit bring what is, is in the spiritual? Dr. Ron, for everything we need in the natural, is already created by God in the spiritual. House is there. Car is there. Wife is there. Husband is there is there but when we come to church we are asking god for peanuts when we need small money for hamburger we say father give me money in the name of jesus i claim it i claim it but when we need a big car we go to the bank When we have fever, we go to God. I rebuke you, headache, in Jesus' name. But when we have migraine, we go to doctor. So God said, oh, ho, you are giving me the small things because I'm smaller than the doctor. Pastor Ron, don't try first. After you have tried your skill, your wisdom, the board of trustees, the chairman, the advisors, the council, then you say, okay, God, help me. No. <laughs> Read me verse 1. In the beginning, God... No, no, no. In the beginning, board. Yeah. It's board. Board of trustees. Don't you see the board? No, I don't see it. Your Bible is not good. <laughs> In the beginning, police. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. In the beginning, my job. In the beginning, people.
In the beginning, choir. In the beginning, tithe. In the beginning, offering. In the beginning, my brain. In the beginning, what? God. Say God. Let's return back to putting God first. Why? Jesus said, Whatsoever I hear my father say, I do. Jesus said, My father walk, and I walk hitherto. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Jesus said, My God sent me from above not to do my will, but the will of him that sent me. Amen. Say with me, I came not to do my will, but the will of him that sent me. I have recently learned, Dr. Ron, that there's nothing I can do well that God can do better. I pray that this message as it has spoken to me, we speak to you. I used to bring God in when I'm tired. When I have struggled and tried, we need piano. God, where do we? Oh, excuse me. All members wait. We need piano. Then we fail. Uh, uh, Sister Gamba, we, we have been looking for piano for three years. No money. Uh, help me. She said, I'm looking for money for grocery. And then when she failed, at the end of it all, and then I say, let's pray. <laughs> Father, <laughs> we need piano. <laughs> I have now learned, before I write to you, that's why you have never received one begging letter from me, even though I live in Africa. I refuse to make God number two. Do you hear what I'm saying? We have run from this verse. We have always said, in the beginning, me. In the beginning, my job. In the beginning, my salary. People who refuse to live by miracle will die sweating. Try not to give God second chance. Don't sweat and sweat and sweat when you're already frustrated, confused, and your case is now in terminal situation. When you're already in coma, then they resuscitate you. Then you say, oh God, now you can help me. <laughs> no! While you are still alive, brilliant, smart, Say God. Everybody say God. God. In my marriage, God. Say God. God. For my home. God. For my job. God. For what I need. God. When I don't know what to do. God. When I'm tired. God. When I'm weak. God. When I'm rich. God. When I'm poor. God. Everybody say God. God. Try God. Try God. Try God. When things are not moving well, try God. When you are weak, try God. When you are in trouble, try God. Don't make God number two. Make God number one. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, Pastor, in the beginning, God, we are failing so much because we do not remember that in the beginning. Amen. 
everything you need was created by him so when you need anything today merge the spirit with the word and when the spirit move let the word call it to be are you hearing what i'm saying healing is in the spirit but it has to be manifested in the natural power is in the spirit it has to be manifested in the natural prosperity is already there i didn't come to america to study prosperity i found that jesus didn't die so that i can prosper he was already i was already prosperous before jesus was born are you hearing me people say when people say when you join faith movement you will prosper it's not true you can join anything you will die but if you join jesus you i believe this message is blessing you please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com the world database of christian preachers to help us reach 100 million people the message continues after this video about anointed tube you can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of god preachers prophets teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Rather than call God when I have failed, I call him before I start. Amen. Am I making sense to you? Yes. I say, am I making sense to you? Yes. Don't make God your last resort. Make him your first resort. If you put him first, you don't struggle too much. Amen. Don't, don't don't say well i try first no pastor this thing hit me god said benson why do why do you try first after you have failed with bruises and injuries after you have accidented yourself before you begin to cry he said you could have done it by smile if you put me first And there are many successes inside you that are not born yet. 
because you have never said success come forth miracle come forth abundant come forth life come forth god asked me one day say how many ministries do you need i name all i said i want a bible college i want hospital i want schools i want tv i want i went to the church after god asked me i told god all i went to the board i said i told god we want this we want this we want this they said to me where will we have the money every time you seek the opinion of your head and the opinion of the people you find no answer because sometimes the person you are telling your problem have more problem than you <laughs> so i went back to god i said father i have just told them all that i told you tv churches bible college radio newspaper evangelism schools hospital i said i told them and they asked me where would the money come from he said to me where did the vision come from if god gives a vision he makes provision don't try first then when you fail you say god come in Mm -mm. Mm -mm. we have turned ourselves to barren people because we are waiting to see if at the end we may need god no start on time i say start on time so many of you are qualified millionaires but you have no money you live in pain because you have never learned to say money come forth how many of you are qualified women that have reached the age of having a husband but no man greets you no man have ever said to you i'd like to marry you no woman have said to you i I want to marry you because you have never said god i speak my husband to be i speak my wife to be the bible says, what things soever ye shall ask the father is that that's that's limitlessness don't wait until (laughs) don't don't fast and pray fast and pray and say god let a man speak to me no if you are in this church and you are spirit filled and you are born again and you are in christ look around (laughs) look around don't go too far just look around look around and as you find the man you think he will be a good husband and a friend and a brother and a husband if he didn't speak to you speak to him (laughs) you think that's offensive it's not it's not called to be don't die in struggle die asking god and there is nothing in your life i'm in my life you are going to say god help me do it and he says i wish you came five years ago when i used to be god but now there's recession Say beginning God. Yeah. Let me tell you what I'm after this morning. Become a Christian that put God in the beginning of everything. Yeah. How many are tired of making God their last resort and they want quick result? Stand up. If you are tired of not getting answers, but you want God to become all in all, 
come forward. Come forward. I say come forward. If you are tired of getting answers late, listen to me while you are coming forward. I, as God's own servant and minister, it took me years, <laughs> it took me years, Dr. Harvison, to discover that many of the things I wouldn't have fumbled at, I fumbled at them because I make God last. John chapter 2 verse 11. This beginning of miracle did Jesus. Are you hearing me? Yes. In creation, for light to come, light was already in existence, but God said, let there be. So I found out that without going to mysticism, without going to occult, without going to spiritual world, without entering to demon kingdom i can make god my beginning this message and a collection of other messages are available at evil media services evil media services inspirational world the first thing that bothered me most in christianity was the inability for people to have a will to live they accepted everything the devil brought their way as if it didn't matter. He gave them power against. It's not enough to come to church and rattle with your tongue. Do something with the power that Jesus gave you. If you are going to preach the gospel, don't imitate any man that failed. Don't be too humble to look like a man who failed. Look for a man who has succeeded. The only man who will criticize you and you listen, or you, or you, in your life, is the man that have done twice what you are trying to do once. The only person, when he criticizes you and you say, listen, is a person that have done twice what you are trying to do once. So when Jesus called the first 12 disciples, I love the place he said, and when he had called the 12, he gave them power against. Not power for, but against against all unclean spirit. chase you rather than looking on how big their weapons are all these cut missiles all the automatic bombs all the instruments of warfare you have nothing with you but there is something in the sky it is the high hand of God You see, life is not by chance. Life is by design. Are you hearing me? Men are in phases, but God is a God of stage. Everything God does, they are timed. God is almighty. He has never lost one battle and he cannot experiment with you. The church is more and more 
abandoning God to use their skill. The day you left your house and say, I'm not a Christian, that is the day you cease to be in charge. The day you said, I am now a child of God, that's the day you lost your right to be in charge of your life. Watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now.
Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idahosa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. It also is a man that believes with God, all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God uh, like his son will see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was a Dowser's level of faith, beyond man's uh, explanation. He had faith. Spiritual a person, yet he was so human in nature, a man who reached out to everyone, the high and the low in society, a man who rubbed shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Um, I've been here with my husband 40 years now. Uh, it, it's a blessing, and it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idahosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyedepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And uh, Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's chief. Igbenidion had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told in the preaching, he said, This is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edipo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. And then, many, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edipo came to Church of God Mission Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached. It was on the prodigal son. The man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting, moving on from one project to another. And often when he started a new project, we whites, we Oibos would say, why is he doing that? We couldn't see the vision at all. We thought, hmm, this is very funny. But then, sometime later, we would realize, oh yes, okay, I see why he's done that now. And I was a Muslim that I gave my life to Christ. In Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that by the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God. On getting there, I met with the Archbishop, my first time of meeting the Archbishop in Dahosa of Church of God Mission International. What an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Onicha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the uh, advanced team, to go and paste posters all over Onicha. And we went to 
put posters all over Odisha. And the first day of the crusade, a truckload of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. An archbishop mounted the platform and, and the soldiers came with their guns. When archbishop started preaching, they all put their guns down. When he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal savior. And we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye opener for us. And right there, I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately, he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute. And so that particular year, I uh, requested, I wrote, and fortunately, I was invited to come. So uh, we went to Nigeria to begin uh, my class. Actually, I went there in 79. My class started in 1980. And uh, we went through the Bible training and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools. He started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex. He started Benson Idahoja University, all those. And well, he's, he's a man we can't, we can't forget. He was a great example to us. And I thank God. It's particularly good for us, whites, British, because in Britain, uh, people are rather skeptical these days. You'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. Um, people of faith are few in Britain, but if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis went to Baltimore, flew to New York, and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from, Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain, because it's a 90 seater plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We rented a storm. There were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to Benin. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are and it's raining cats and dogs, what do you want us to do? And when I looked through the wood, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane would lose, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Archbishop Idaosa. We say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft. He lifted his hand. I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said. God, you called me and you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back up. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. And he sat down, five minutes time, the pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we, were the, we have lost our way, we would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos, it was still raining. That is where the testimony is. Mama, I was there, you can ask her. 
I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid, can we get a bus so we go to Benin? He said, no. James, you don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? <laughs> I was scared. I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I will not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold-plated aircraft. Chief Benin, the one he called him, the plane rolled out from the hangar and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came and said, give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here. There won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned. His name, Chief Ebohon, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God, could stop the witches from meeting. Then daddy said, or papa said, yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one on one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are. You know, uh, he never celebrated mediocrity. He never took no for an answer. He dared to go where nobody wants to go or everybody feared to go. He was a man that believed in venturing where others fear to venture. He was a trailblazer. I remember those days, for example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today. It also started it in 1974-75. I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign wonder anointing and his boldness. I, was, I did a meeting for Dr. Maurice Cerullo in 2010. And just before I spoke in his world conference, they said, uh, oh, miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors. It happens in the third world. Well, when I took the microphone, I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me their sticks and began to walk. Um, that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits. And I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take up the spirit that is upon you and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation. Because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. It, I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland. And when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced that the Archbishop Idahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives. Hello, I am Bishop 
Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa, that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. He was very, very young, but he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And one of these days, he was riding past, and people were crying in my house. <laughs> and he just stopped, brought his, brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, with it through the crowd. And he came and I said, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. <laughs> He said, ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. <laughs> Till this time, it was about four o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I say, hey, please, I beg you. Don't, don't make a mockery of your God. He said, no, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that, uh, uh, Behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpents, to tread upon scorpions, and to raise the dead. And I said, listen, don't make a mockery of yourself. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal that sin. Raise the dead! I said what? I'm like waiting on a job! Again! 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 Benson, you mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Um, no. Why? What you say I can do it? Yes. In the name of Jesus. He said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was, she, she was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, listen. This baby died at about nine, and it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The fa why, why, he, why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate. And he said, oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it. I said, how? How are you going to do it? And he said, okay, go out if you don't want to see, see me do it. But uh, you know, as a stubborn child, then I stood at the I stood at the door, I stood at the door with my back laid at the door, one one eye on this side and one eye on the front door, and he prayed. Child, be healed. After he prayed, he asked me, "What is the name of the child?" What is the girl's name? I said it's Inuarata. 
I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world know about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I die. When I died, they kept me inside one room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, a bit three hours later, my father come, my late Ben Sinidahosa. He said, what is happening? He told him that her daughter, her daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. So they tried the, in the ordinary native daughter tried, they can't raise her back to life. He said, where is her now? He said, she's swallowing there. He said, he asked my father the question. He said, daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him, come back to life? My father said, yes. He said they should take him to the room. Then take him to where they, they lie me down. So carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray, the God that answered by fire hear their prayer. I come back to life. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That is how I'm a living so today. And he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, Inuata, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Inuata, I command you, rise up! I was just peeping. And all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about 9 o'clock sneezed. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Another day died to me after a year and three months in the womb. So my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me. Then he said, maybe I'm not a baby, I'm a wood, I'm this, but for God be thy glory. When they gave back to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Do you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand, I couldn't wait, and I ran out. <laughs> with him to the mother. He said, please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, what is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power. Super power. Then I wasn't a child of God. My mother used to serve, um, she was a princess of Olokun, Shango, and all that. And I said, mm, the, the, the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graven images that has no power. So the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then, but I just knelt down and I said, Father, let Jesus come into my heart right now. 
and I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer, but I just knelt down and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like us. That young man that we call pastor believed and he did this. And you know, when I finished prayer, there was an abundant joy, unspeakable joy in my spirit. And the following day, uh, we, we used to call him Brother Benson. He came and said, where is the child? He said, the child is there. And I called him to the room and I said, you know what I did last night? I did know. Uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but I just knelt by my bedside and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, let me have a part of that power. I said, ah, you have done it. And I knelt down, he prayed, and I, and I said the, the sinner's prayer, and that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father Benson Dalsa is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there was, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today I'm alive. I have about eight children, two guests, and two boys and six guests. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about 10 grandchildren to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said that the joy that no man can give, that is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preacher's pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, 
prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. And I'd like you to know that he was also my spiritual father please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people let this video go viral remain blessed hello this video is about Archbishop Bensi Idaosa his early Christian ministry testimony as a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. And flying around on my bicycle in those days, I went through the city of Benin in Nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life. After five hours of hard session, I found a compound where a little girl had died a few hours before. The corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial. I walked boldly to the father of the child. The God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life? The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. The corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Bensi Indaosa. Now, Bensi Indaosa childhood. Bensi Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938. To a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on a farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. 
A leader took correspondence calls from Britain and the United States while working in Bada Shoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural. He was converted by Pastor Akpos on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, young, Bens young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akbar's small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a ninth vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following, said the voice from heaven. The room was filled with the presence of God as Benson fell to his knees before the Lord. Wherever you want me to go, I will go. He prayed through the night, renewing his vows to God and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation. After his call, Benson launched into ministry, work preaching from village to village. The gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing. More people confess Christ as their Savior and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with his headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria, established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastored churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. In addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he, also, he, he was also president of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, president of Idaosa World Outreach, and president of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of, Bish of Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robert uh, University in Oklahoma. He also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971 a doctorate of divinity in 1981 from the world faith college new orleans and a doctor of law degree from ora robert university in march 1984 he also received another degree he's also received other degrees from the international university in Brussels, belgium archbishop benson and his wife margaret idaosa were blessed with four children Idaosa Supreme Tax. So winning was Idaosa primary concern with a motto evangelism our supreme tax. He worked towards his goal of reaching the origin Nigeria, Africa, and the rest of the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a black African, he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries all 123 countries all over the world crusade played a major role in his ministry he was involved at least one crusade per month a record crowd of nearly 1 million people a night attended his lagos crusade in april 1985 he established the redemption television ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people what leading gospel minister said about our bishop idaosa according to mrs gordon frada lisa president of christ for the nation incorporated dallas texas usa i know of no young black in all africa who is preaching who is reaching million as benson is in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in in, a, in his weekly nationwide telecast in his Bible school, training eager students from several nations. He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States, 
where he often appear on national religious telecast. His burden for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrate he is especially called of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Benson Daosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. When they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got miraculous answer from, his, from this mighty leader of God's people, said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful Benin tribal kings. He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters sit over 10,000 in 1981. His Bible school attract upper class people from different African nations and also come from Maurice, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe, and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa evangelistic ministry has reached nations around the world. He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminar have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises and that God's miracle provision applies to African as well as to Americans. He believed that African has a part in God's work and African will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christians in their own land. It also rose from the rank of an ordinary man to a world leader's leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher, uh, an apostle, an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion which ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. Idaosa operated in faith. He had a robust faith. He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. He also, also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people, both in the gospel ministry and other faith of human endeavors. And he applied the principles he learned, he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry. He was very energetic, hardworking. One of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Daosa. He was committed and consistent, and he had confidence in himself, he was very humble and full of godly wisdom. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was said to be the leader of over 7 million Jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the Lord in February 1998. Now I'm going to 
talk about his early ministry again as a youth he got converted to christianity by a certain pastor Paul, and joined his, the flagging congregation as one of the first members he was very active and converted many to christianity after experiencing a revelation from god calling him into ministry he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establish, establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was well known for many notable quotable quote, quotes, including, My God is not a poor God. Your attitude determines your your attitude determines your altitude. It is more risky not to take risk. I am a possibilitarian. A big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck. If your faith says yes, God cannot say no. Among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Ryan Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include Faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, World of Faith, Group of School, Bensi Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of his son, Reverend E. F. B. Uh, Idaosa. His wife, Margaret uh, Idaosa, is the current Archbishop of the church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blinds, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used to affect the nation of the world. And I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord. I am honored to be a part of his anointing, a part of his, of his ministry. I want to ask you, please make sure you share these videos, this video, this particular video to bless all the people and make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube, and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contact, get to know about Anointed Tube. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful, powerful, humble, great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him. I, and I'll say it again, I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to Archbishop Bensi in the house. The Lord bless you.